Okay. Um, I have been out and about a lot this week. I was at Nicole Maliataka's fundraiser the other night. I had some business meetings last night, and, and I was thinking about possibly not having a cocktail today. But after this last guest, James Sascala, okay, talking about how um, none, this is a former CIA guy. Now, he's talking about how none of this stuff, the emails or the laptops have been authenticated, which I don't get it. I need a drink, okay? And a little sanity will go along with it. I'm having a Milagro Resposado with a dash of Campari. It's my own creation. Join me if you wish. Um, as we are joined right now, solo, without his usual opponent in the Mix It Up, David Eisenbach joins us. He's the former candidate here in New York for uh, public advocate. He's also a professor at Columbia University, great friend of the show. He's been with us from day one. Um, Dave, what do you make? Usually a good offset to my Trumpism in, you know, saying it like it is. And when I know you were, you know, when, when the Democrats are doing something wrong, you will willing to be critical of it. That's why I really respect your opinion. Uh, what do you make? What's your kind of overview of what's happening with these emails? It, it, look, it's, it's a proof of legal corruption. This is influence peddling. Uh, at the highest levels that uh, Joe Biden and his son were engaged in. You want to call it legalized corruption, uh, whatever. And for Democrats, either you don't, it doesn't matter to you. Okay, that's fine. But don't deny it didn't happen. And don't deny this isn't corrupt practices. It's, uh, I don't even think they're denying it. You know what I mean? They're, they're just using this, you know, generalization that this is a smear campaign. Well, then you get these intelligence, these unnamed intelligence officials saying, oh, this is more of, you know, Russia, uh, uh, KGB, FSB operation. You know, no, the guy is, was engaged in influence peddling. He made a tremendous amount of money, not because he had any qualifications, but because he was the son of the vice president of the United States. There's no denying that. Do you think... Um in your view, and I mean, you're one of the best scholars we have on this show. Do you think this stuff is real? Yeah, I think it's real. You do? I, yeah, I'm not. I, it, look, not, nothing surprises me. Uh, there's been, not only is this probably real, but this—he's not the only one who's guilty of these uh, this situation. Uh, and and we've seen plenty of form, former presidents cashing in, uh, engaged in the same thing. Former secretaries of state, sorry, former secretaries of defense, uh, they all engage in this legalized corruption. So uh, this doesn't surprise me. So you think somewhere in there, this is another kind of loophole. Like, yeah, it looks gross. It's def it is what it is. It walks like a duck. It talks like a duck. But it's not technically illegal activity. Correct. And that's the problem. That's the indictment of the system. The system itself is corrupt. Okay, well, Most corruption, in my opinion, is legal corruption in America. Well, it's not the old school, you know, political machines where you're handing an envelope to the mayor, right, uh, to buy something. It's making a campaign contribution and getting political favors so that you can build a luxury tower in Crown Heights with the support of the mayor. That's how the legal corruption works on the city level, and it works the same on the federal level. So, um, me and Nico, my steadfast, hardworking producer, um, we were talking about it this morning, and I always like to kind of, you know, look, I'm, I come from a law and order family, my father was a cop, but I'm Italian, so of course we know people on both sides of the street, right? When some stuff comes out, and, these guys, and the guys involved are Italians, and they have vowels at the end of their name, the FBI swoops right in and starts breaking down doors. Now, if they have these laptops, and do you think if Joe Biden was getting half of Hunter Biden's money, um, is there money laundering there? Is there tax evasion there? All, is I would, all I can say is conduct the investigation. FBI should be on it and let the chips fall where they may. All right. And if this winds up getting uh, Joe Biden impeached in his administration, then so be it. Well, that might be the best thing. That might be the reason why he's just going to deny to the end. You know, like when you get when you get in trouble with with the misses or something, um, the best strategy is deny to the end, right? Because yeah. you, you can never be implicated. You just have to be willing to face any 
repercussions, but he's just Look, denying to the end. And then he's not the last. Po he's not the first politician to kind of run out the string, deny, deny, deny. Hope election day comes before any uh, real smoking gun emerges. No doubt. Well, I want to shift gears with you for a minute and get your views on the uh, Amy Coney Barrett hearings, and now yeah. um, today they're voting to uh, put it to a full vote in the Senate. I thought, David, that she did one of the most amazing jobs I had ever seen at keeping her composure and showing the type of person that she is, that she was, you know, unrattled, unbaffled, and, uh, you know, even when the senator asked her, well, you know, what, are you, what kind of notes are you looking at? Um, the woman showed she had the full grasp of what she was talking about. She didn't need that with papers and everything. I thought... The Republicans did a good job of saying, let you, let's let you meet her. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's put her out there and let you meet her. And they tried to attack her from every angle. I found it amazing that the women of the Democratic Party were the most critical, Kamala Harris and uh, Maisie Hirono, Crazy Maisie, um, when they should be rooting for a woman like this to get to the highest heights of her career. Um, what were your thoughts on the hearings and her becoming a justice? Well, obviously, I disagree with her on just about every issue. Uh, but there, there's no doubt uh, she is smart enough. There doesn't seem to be any integrity issues on her record. Uh, so I think that she will be confirmed. Um, you know, the Republicans have the Senate, so there it is. Well, what do you agree with her? What do you disagree? You said you disagree with her on almost oh, well, everything. Well, I disagree with her on uh, gay rights issues and... Um, uh, uh, women's rights issues. So, um, but that's you know beside the point, right? I mean, it, that when a Republican president uh, gets an opening on the Supreme Court, he's going to he's going to appoint a Republican and a very conservative Republican at that. Um, my problem is with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She should have retired. I've even said it at this time uh, in the last year of the Obama administration, so that he or even a, two years in, uh, two years before leaving office, so that we wouldn't have this this problem here. Uh, Ruth was sick and she was old and it was irresponsible for her not to retire to allow a Democrat to fill that seat. Now we're looking at a six to three majority of hardcore conservatives uh, on the Supreme Court and it's going to mean uh, big changes to a lot of uh, judicial issues that Democrats care a great deal about in the next uh, decade. Well, let me ask you this. You're also our in-house presidential historian. Um, I had Vito Fasella, former congressman from New York here, on earlier in the week to break down the whole pack in the court issue. And mm -hmm. it sure seems like, uh, from Vito's breakdown, that if they have the House and the Senate and the presidency, they can expand the court to any number they want. It doesn't take any constitutional changes. It's just legislative. That's How right. bad is that? for us as a country if they can each president can just continue to pack the court well let me tell you right uh if things go the way that the polls and of course that's a big if the way the polls are indicating uh with democratic majorities in the, the senate dead. and the house and the presidency uh you're going to see an end of the filibuster uh the democrats are going to be able to pass basically whatever they want including a whole new health care uh system Okay. Yep. Uh, and they will pack the court. All right. There, there is uh, a feeling that uh, we got to take back the government, and we got to take it in our direction in the same way that Donald Trump took government in his direction. So uh, yeah, hey. it's going to be very contentious. And if the Democrats sweep, uh, they're going to kind of jam a lot of stuff down you get your throats. No doubt. He, he, he laughs too. He goes, "They're going to jam it down your throats." <laughs> um, let me ask you this. This guy, John Roberts, and it, we need six justices now because John Roberts seems to be always siding with the left. Um, this recent ruling in Pennsylvania um, yeah. where they can accept ballots after no postmark, after the date. Um, in our last minute, what do you think about this? Uh, this is very concerning. Uh, first off, it says in black and white, passed by the legislature, the ballots have to be in uh, by election day, right? But this judge now extended it uh, based on the idea that the Constitution of Pennsylvania guarantees the right to vote. Okay, legally questionable. When is that going to be decided? Well, John Roberts had the opportunity to decide it now. Let the people of Pennsylvania know. Either way, can you send it in? Uh, uh, can it be counted after Election Day or not? Right? Give them a deadline. Instead, he punted by siding with the Democrats. They didn't, the Supreme Court didn't look at this ruling. 
And so we might be faced with, after Election Day, that ruling goes back to the Supreme Court, as well as rulings from North Carolina and Michigan. We have, could have a six to three Republican majority, once again, deciding what votes get counted. 2000, year 2000, Bush v. Gore on steroids. Wow. This Oh my goodness! All right. Well, you'll be with us to break it down as it's as it's happening in real time. I really appreciate it, brother. I want you to check in with the audience soon on your new foray, beginners for Bitcoin, and uh, give us a regular man point of view. That's why I'm buying Bitcoin because I'm worried about the U.S. dollar after yeah. this uh, constitutional crisis. I love it. All right, David. Thank you, my brother. I'll talk to you right, soon. Man. That's David Eisenbach, Columbia University professor, former candidate for New York City public advocate. And we're going to come back and we're going to take a stroll down the red carpet rendezvous with Lauren Conlon.